talk about something that's really interesting and something that caught my eye from my last week's travel. So what happened last week? Last week I was in Singapore and I was giving a talk, actually a non-technical talk on this event that was full, that had many developers in attendance. And from the, the developers we had, we had uh, Android engineers to Flutter developers and just developers that use Google products. And during this time, we had a great conversation, and that is um, a couple of us on the mobile side. And that the question that arose was, how is the comprise of no Flutter, KMM, and also just native development? And if you're there, and actually it was a pretty good discussion because it made me think, many people might be thinking the same, like, what should I learn or what should I know right now? But this is what my answer was on that discussion. And one thing that I've noticed is that last year too, I was able to travel to Berlin and Spain, specifically Barcelona, and uh, I met developers. And <clears throat> the one thing, sorry, the one thing that I noticed is that um, Flutter is being used a lot worldwide. By worldwide, I mean mostly internationally, which is pretty true because I've met many developers who actually flutter internationally. As for the United States, I've not many I've not met many flutter developers. I mean I know a couple, but it goes back to the idea of many new applications. I mean when you think about it, would you rather go native or would you rather go flutter? Flutter is also more stable right now. And I think that's why people are choosing more flutter especially for startups and because um, I've not seen, I mean, I doubt an entire team or an, like for instance, our app, I don't think we would rewrite the entire application just to fit Flutter because we already have strong Android teams and iOS team. And I feel like that's what has been happening here in the United States. So not not only here. I feel like that's just more for more established applications that already started that native route. Now, if you're wondering, should you learn native? Should you learn Flutter? I would say definitely it's not bad to know either or, because you never know where you will work, and also you have to look into your local market. By local market, I mean, for instance, here in the United States, I've not seen many jobs that are advertised for Flutter as compared to native, but but that doesn't mean that maybe your location will have that. And if you look internationally too, just know exactly what you're comfortable with. And if you identify as Flutter, that's definitely okay too. You can apply to specific Flutter jobs. And also now Kotlin multi-platform, which is KMM, which is also becoming popular as we go. So if you ask me as a native developer, Am I willing to learn, let's say, KMM or Flutter? Definitely. I don't see it as a big issue. But if I was a build, if I was building a project right now from scratch, I think, to be fair, and this is going to be the controversial part because this is what I said. I think, honestly, Jetpack Compose and let's say just Kotlin itself and the way Swift is done in iOS it's so easy to do right now that I feel like I'm still strongly, if I went native, I would still be okay because I've done that. I've been able to build pretty quickly on both iOS and Android separately, just using their own individual platform specific code, let's say Swift UI and then in Android Jetpack Compose because they're so together like they, this they, I mean it's if you look at the code you'll be very shocked it's way similar so it goes again back to my dilemma of as a developer and and that's why I'm making this video so please comment down if you have any suggestions so I do have a side I do take a stand which is I don't mind learning either as I mentioned at the beginning but I am more comfortable going native both because I can do that pretty quick. 
because I've been doing native for the longest and it's easier now to just jump and write Swift code because it's pretty easy to write and read. It's similar to Jetpack Compose in a way. That's how easy it went. As for KMM, it's even easier because it's Kotlin again. Same. So unless you are employed and then your employer tells you use this, then I would say definitely follow what your employers think. But if you're not employed and you're doing it for your personal project, I would say pick either that you think will be important. Now, the other thing that I wanted to add that I feel like we also discussed is that mobile developers should learn a little bit of API development too. <laughs> and I think it's pretty good just to add a couple of skills so that, hey, you never know, you can um, build some APIs too because definitely we consume a lot of those. So it's good to know how they're built so that if you decide to do Python, Flask, or that cool stuff, yeah. And that's it. So for the next video, I wasn't able to make any videos for the series because I was out of the country for a while. So we'll be continuing the series next week. And that's it. Bye. Let me know what you know about, let me know what you think about KMM, that is Kotlin Multi-Platform Flutter. I don't know about, I don't know what happened to React Native, but I've not heard about it a lot. But there's also a lot of power with Jetpack Compose now that you can do it also for the web. So there's pretty cool stuff happening in the tech world. And I would say, don't be scared, just do what's good for you. And also what's gonna get you the job is what, if, if that's your end goal. And uh, bye.